I know Brother Enoch did uh, mention a few things um, about uh, Arizona procurement, which I will probably just you know, do a deep dive so we get more into the details. So if uh, technical could help me, yeah. So again, this is how to bid contracts with the city. Uh, the next slide, I have a few items on the agenda. So obviously a quick introduction. Uh, we want to talk about NTC formation. I know Brian Enoch did talk a little bit about this, but I, I just think from a business standpoint, we need to educate ourselves a little bit more. Uh, registering with the city, those are some steps you also have to take. Uh, then bid and contract search. So if you recall, Brother Enoch mentioned about hunting. So once you get your license, you have to go hunt for that contract. Mm. You have to go hunt for that bid. So I'll give us a little bit about that as well. Then uh, there's typically a pre-bid conference, which I'll talk a little bit about. Um, it's required, I think, from a legal standpoint, to have all parties involved in the pre-bid. And I did provide some sample contracts to bid, some things that I've looked at. Again, it's very wide, uh, depending on what skill set you have or what area of business you want to tackle. Uh, so I just provided a few examples for us to see. At least some of the things that I have looked at. Then bid documents, sort of what you can expect. Uh, you know, the city would require you or the state would require you to uh, provide up front. Uh, executing contracts. So some of the advice, um, I could have done a little bit more on here in terms of the finances. But I kind of feel like the finance, how to finance your business, how to, to, to get capital could be for a different session with a more uh, you know, deep dive into the information and obviously uh, conclusion. So on the next slide, from an introduction standpoint, we've all heard this morning about Arizona, uh, Procure Arizona. So just to, to hammer on a little bit more, it's a one-stop shop for the state in terms of contracts and open bids. It's the one place, it's sort of very efficient. You think about before, before um, Procure AZ, there's so many places you have to go to to search for contracts. So many departments, so many divisions have their own separate portals and websites. But I think it might have been the governor before the last to basically put everything into one single page. So like Brother Enoch mentioned, some of the DEG contracts, some of your home health contracts, you know, uh, pharmaceutical contracts, IT contracts, construction, I mean, you name it, supplies, everything is all in this portal. So I kind of feel like it's, uh, like Brother Edok said as well, just to reinforce, it's one of the quicker ways to get straight to the point, right? But then, once you get straight to the point, you want to make sure that you are prepared, you have the entity form, you know, you have the cash flow, you are thinking of the team, you have people who, you can work with your experts to execute. Um, then the other thing I would also like to stress on, as part of the introduction is that minority business enterprises, we're all welcome, but we don't appear, we don't show up. Mm. We're never there. And believe it or not, a lot of these contracts and bids, they have coders that they don't publicly share, that they have within themselves and say, hey, if we can find this X number of minority to award this contract for, we're successful. It is not publicly shared, but it's always something that they keep within themselves. They would love to make it very diverse. The Indian reservations, those are, in fact, a lot of the contracts out there, if, if you can pack it yourself, or you can find something that ties you to one of the reservations, it's almost, you know, a no-brainer. It's almost, I wouldn't say 100% because there's nothing guaranteed, but you're almost certain to win that contract. Mm -hmm. So the one thing we need to keep in mind is that, yes, we have challenges in terms of maybe raising finances, in terms of getting licenses, but everybody goes through that. And what happens is most other, other communities, they, they, they basically perfected it, right? And it, it, the time to, to get to what they need is very short. And the other thing is they share information a lot. But I'm not kidding on that. We as, as, as a community here, we don't share information. We hoard information. But it's never in our best interest. We want to be collective and move ourselves up. 
I might get into a little bit of that with some, with some of my experience, but I would like to stress that the fact that we are minorities gives us a major, major edge. You just don't know. They don't announce it on TV, they don't say it on radio, but it does give us a major edge. So think about that for a second. And again, like we said, if you don't have everything, you can always partner up and plug all the areas that you know, you, you're lacking. So the next slide, um, I'll talk a little bit about entity formation. This is more on the business side, because at the end of the day, you know, it's a business, what they're trying to do. I don't care if it's, uh, you know, in, in, in science, medicine, IT, you know, it's a business. You have to have a structure. But I don't mention about the business plan. You like to see your business plan. And what are they looking for? They're testing different things to make sure that you can execute, you can be successful, right? You understand the different tenets of running a business, right? So obviously the first thing you have to, you have to do is this. If you are interested in pursuing a contract or starting any kind of business, the first thing you need to do is to form an entity. There are reasons why you do that. You form an entity because most uh, governmental institutions will deal with you as an entity, right? And obviously there are laws and regulations that has to be followed. So obviously you need to start from, you know, from that entity. In terms of entity, there are a few options that you have, right? So you have the S Corp, you have the C Corp. Most companies you see out there today, like most of the big companies that a lot of us work for are C Corps. Some of them, the difference is just the number of partnerships you can have. You can have up to 100 people as shareholders, but those are the two I would say you don't need to worry about those. The partnership is the next one. Depending on what it is you are looking to achieve, there are advantages and disadvantages, right? And the LLC is very popular. It's a limited liability company. And the last one is non-profit, non which sometimes refers to as a 501c3. If you are aiming for non-profit for a good cause, yes, you know, you can form a non-profit and, um, and you know, bid for contracts. In terms of consideration for all of, this, all, all of these entities, there are two things to keep in mind. The first one is taxation. All of us who are interested in, in forming a business or going after a contract, we do it for one major purpose to make a profit, right? Mm -hmm. If you don't think carefully about your taxation, you might end up you know, shooting yourself in the foot. Uh, for example, the S Corp and the C Corp, they have what they call double taxation. So meaning that the government will tax the company a percentage, and then the income you make from that company will be taxed again based on your own tax bracket. So depending on what you're trying to do, you know, you want to look into the taxation to make sure that you're optimizing the taxation Particularly, LLC, they are, they are very tax friendly. It's a pass-through taxation, so you don't have to worry about the double taxation. Uh, the other one is liabilities. Obviously, you know, you need to be very careful. Uh, people out there are always looking to sue, right? It's just the nature of the environment, the, the society we live in, right? You want to make sure you are protected. In terms of liability, the LLC is very good. There's something called piercing the deal. The deal is like a, a cloth that covers, you know, protects the entity inside. So if you don't have a liability to protect you, they can pierce the deal and liability comes to you instead of liability stopping at the company. So those are things to really, really keep in mind. Uh, in terms of filing, which is obviously, you, you know, hopefully you've talked to a CPA or a lawyer, and one of the tips I have here is that, you know, keep lawyer friends or a CPA as a friend. They're always good, you know, consult with them. They, they can help you, you know, and very quickly provide uh, guidance. And in that way, if you have a friend with a CPA, you don't have to go pay and consult. Um, one of the, the two um, websites or platforms that I find very user-friendly and very cheap to form an entity is LegalZoom and um, Inkfile. For the state of Arizona, it's $50 with the filing fee. I mean, you don't even have to go through these guys. You can go down to City Hall and fill out the paper and pay. But for us, who, for some of us who are not that business savvy, I would recommend that we start. I mean, the fees are not that much. 
maybe at most to 99,000 in total of 150 dollars, but it gives you the guidance, it helps work through the steps, because if you're not going to provide, they're not, you know, they don't, they don't have that duty to, you know, give you any kind of uh, consultation. Then, um, Arizona Corporate Commission, this is where you actually go in uh, to see, once you form your entity, you can see your status, or if you're about to do a search, you know, it's always recommended to go on there and make sure that, you know, whatever I mean you are using to start the business does not exist, so there's no conflict, you're able to separate yourself. The next step here is um, tax, tax ID. Brother Enoch mentioned this briefly, right? It's very important. I'll probably say this is the next step. Once you form your entity, the next step is you have to go and get what is called an employer identification number or tax ID. So the, the link over there takes you straight to where you need to file. It's very easy, it's very quick. Uh, some of these things, you know, when you hear IRS and look at the website, it might seem very um, intimidating, but there's really not a lot to this. You know, if you've done it once, the second time, third time, it's, it's very easy. They ask a few things, your name, your address, social security, which we all have, the type of business you're looking to form, and within a minute, you get your EIN emailed to you. So you need it, it's a very key component because when you start getting into business, this is how you file you know, pretty much everything. This is how, this is one of the unique numbers to identify the company. The next one is opening a bank account. I recommend this. So if you're gonna look like a business, you know, you want to make sure that you, you're basically tying everything up and looking like a real business. Uh, you can open, you know, some of the low maintenance accounts in some of the smaller banks. The big banks, I probably say avoid those big banks, the Chase and the Bank of America. For now, if you're starting very small, use some of the smaller banks, the community banks that are very helpful, even some of the uh, credit, unions. credit unions, exactly. So they're very low maintenance, you don't have to worry about the fee that you are taking out of the account every month, or even the possible require. So, so the board bracket banks can say, for this type of account, you need $5,000 so you can avoid the fees or you, you, so you don't want to deal with that. If you start small and then as you progress, you can uh, get into dealing with the bigger banks. So again, find out CPF. It's always good to have a lawyer friend. It's always good to have a CPA friend and um, it basically saves you a lot. You know, it progresses you well ahead. You can get you know, free advice and free consultation. The next slide is registering with the city. Again, this is also a very simple step. The, the first link right there, if you type it into your web browser, it takes you directly to um, you know, where all of the uh, contracts and deeds are. So obviously, you put in your tax ID, you can see to the right, you put in your tax ID, then your company name, um, the country, and obviously you have to have an email address. And once you've done that, it's also a great process. It sends you an email right there and gives you a vendor ID. So the vendor ID would you now use that to create a password for yourself. And once you've done that, you're ready to go. Very, very easy. Very simple. So like what I have said, information is power. And if we're lacking it, you know, we don't even know where to start. I know you quoted the Bible is probably more versed than me about we all perish because of lack of information, lack of knowledge in the Bible. So this is one of the things that we need to come together, share. A lot of the communities out there share. They, they, they come together and, and, and solve problems. I've studied a lot of the communities, the Indians, the Koreans, the Chinese. I mean, if you go to any major city, you always find a Chinese bank, an Indian bank. I mean, they're everywhere. But we don't have, you know, African banks. You know, we can, we can work together and, and basically help ourselves. But that's the topic for another day. Uh, the next slide is, so here are some of the sample contracts and open bids. So once you logged in, you have a password, you've been able to log in. Uh, the first thing you see to the, to the left is the AZ Procure. It has all the details. You can see, um, you know, if you follow some of this link, it takes you to the chart to the right, which is basically um, the contracts and open bids. You can go through them directly. If you click on it, it will tell you who 
is in charge of it in the department, what the city or state is looking for, uh, all of the details. Then you can start you know, digging and starting the process of actually putting yourself in the contract of having uh, an open bid. If it's an open bid, you can just go straight right into it and bid for it. If it's a, if it's a contract, there are certain procedures you have to follow in terms of you know, having a pre-bid conference. The city will call everyone in and um, you can make sure that you have all the credentials that you are required. Then you are able to ask questions. Then after that, they have a site visit. You go to the site, whatever it is they're trying to do, and they want to ha have you ask questions. And a lot of times, the city will use uh, contractors, even contractors, not city employees, to do all of these things. So they're using consultants and contractors to even answer your question. Right, so uh, and yeah, so there's so many opportunities out there that we just need to, you know, get closer up to or find, you know, I mean, we all have our daily grinds and all that stuff, but again, this is, if you're interested in contracting, if you're interested in businesses, I think those are things you need to start getting yourself familiar with. Uh, the next slide, so this is MESA. Uh, for some reason, MESA has its own separate, um, portal for contracts. Again, it's very open. So the previous slide has the link. But again, these are some examples. These are big opportunities. You just go right in and you can see. Uh, it varies. I mean, it could be school supplies. It could be police department looking for equipment. If, as long as you're a vendor, you have a vendor ID, you can fund it. You have a, a legal entity, you put in your bid. And like I said, as a minority, you stand a much higher chance of getting or winning the contract. It actually happened to me, which I will share you know, some of my experiences uh, in some of the contracts. So this is City of Mesa. Again, it's different from the AZ Procure. The AZ Procure is specifically for all of the states of Arizona. For some reason, Mesa also has its own separate little portal uh, for bidding uh, uh, jobs and, and contracts. The next slide. So. Like I said, there's a, there's a, there's a pre-bid conference. So once you've been able to put in all your details, apply for the, con for the contract, and put in um, your interest in the bid, you, get, you receive that information um, uh, via email telling you what time and what date, where to go. For example, in the city of Chinla, it's always a downtown. They have a building right there. You know, it's on one of the floors. You come in, you sign, they validate your um, credentials, then you know you sit in the conference room. They have all the vendors who have um, pre-qualified in the room, and everybody asks questions. And uh, through that process, you can sort of see what you know your competitors are, right? Who are also in the pre-bid, you know what they've done, what their structure looks like. And for example, I I had one that uh, I think we were 22 companies total. I was the only black person in the room, and I was the only minority company. Uh, bidding for that same contract. So, I mean, I could see all my competitors, these were big companies, right? You know, really, they've done so many of these. They probably know all the city people, you know, you can, you can sort of say that I was the only one out there that wasn't really, you know, again, I'm just a businessman, right? I'm not, I don't even have the, the uh, what you call it, the skill set, you know, to deliver the job, but the point is this. It's a business. I don't yeah. care what it is, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I don't care what you're trying to do. Yeah. You, you're trying to build chips as an engineer. It's a business, yeah. right? If you are developing IT portals and doing it, it's still a business. If you are building clinics out there as a physician, you still need to make money. Yeah. So that's sort of the way I see it. I think that's the mentality we should always have. Don't get bogged down or don't get intimidated by because of the fact that you don't have a license. You're not a legal, you know, you're, you're not, a, uh, you're not, you're not a, um, a medical professional. You know, I know people who build clinics, they're not doctors, right? They hire doctors and they make money off of it, right? They hire pharmacists and they make money off of it. It's just a spread. You go out, you know, contract, you know, X amount to pay, right? And then you turn around and find the person that you pay pay them a little less and keep the rest for yourself and just do that in volume. You make money. You don't have to be a physician. So I'm just saying this to encourage us. Don't be shy. Yes, there'll be obstacles. There'll be things that everybody has to also do with. Black, white, Indian, Isha. 
you also have to provide those requirements that the, the city or state is asking for. So they will all go through it. We too will also go through But guess what? In the process of going through it, you have actually find yourself, you are now getting very closer to what you need. So the next time you do it, it becomes easier and easier and easier. So this particular pre-bid conference, we, after the pre-bid conference, everybody had questions. I had my own questions. They were silly questions, you know, but I had my own questions. And then we all went to the site and looked at the, the uh, project. There were consultants, some engineering consultants for the city were answering all the uh, questions that we had. Uh, we spent hours on the site. So the interesting thing was that we had a deadline to put in the bid. And right away, I started getting emails and phone calls from some of my competitors in the room. I, at first, I was like, why is this people contacting me for what? You know, something electrical company, something this contract. I was like, okay, so I reached out to them, I called them about, can you call me? They were like, oh yeah, we called you, we're trying to see what your interest is, well, how can we collaborate together? They were looking to join me, to partner with me, because if they did that, their chances of winning the bid yeah. is even higher. Wow. So I never knew, oh, I, thought, I was shocked. Why are these people emailing me? So it was over time that I now realized that okay, this is really how it works. Mm. So they're increasing their chances of winning when they actually have a minority yeah. wow. on their team. We don't know this. A lot of us don't know this. A lot of the contracts out there, even at the federal level, they're looking for minorities to to award these contracts to. We we're never at the table. We are busy, you know, doing whatever it is that we keep doing every day. So, and uh, one of the my, one of the things I will advocate for is that you don't have to quit your day job to do some of these things. I never want you to quit your day job. You start gradually, gradually, gradually to the point whereby you feel very comfortable to leave your day job. When whatever you're working on is big enough that you know it's taking so much of your time to focus, then you leave the focus on it. Obviously, you have to be able to pay your bills and take care of you. But when you start, you start small, just like what Enoch said, start small, keep your source of income, and gradually, you know, increase the size and, and the scope of what you're working on. So the next slide, um, so this is, this is an example of a, a pharmaceutical contract that I looked at. And believe it or not, there are a lot in terms of what the city is looking to spend. So, I mean, you can find contracts in the millions of dollars, you can find contracts in thousands of dollars, right, depending on what it is, but you have to hunt for that contract. You have to go hunt for it, you have to make sure that, okay, you have some of the pre-qualifications, you have some of the things like finances is one, I mean to sell, you know, like we said, if you need to partner up, partner up. But I should mention something here that resonates very well. I have some friends in Texas, within Free Central, I think it's actually called King's, King's Parish or somewhere in North, um, up North. And one of my friends attended the church and the men, what they do is they, they team up together. I don't know if I share this with you. They team up together and, and see who, what interest you have. If you're interested in real estate, they form a little group. If you're interested in contracting, they form a group. If you're interested in transportation business, they form a group. If you're interested in IT, they form a group. So they live in these different groups, they now figure out how to fund it. Some of them in the group, you might not have the credit to get the facility or the credit line, but some people might have it. But because you don't have the, the credit, you can be the one actually driving the work and executing the work. Yeah. Some people will have the talent or the, the skill set to, to basically plan out you know, what needs to get done and make it a profitable venture. So at the end of the day, it's about having that teamwork, collaborating together as Christians to get things done. But again, those are, you know, as we progress the forum, those are some things that we can bring in as agenda and topics to talk about. So going back to this, uh, you can sort of see, you know, it's a purchase order. The city is looking to spend up to $12 billion and they're looking basically to award it. The details on this, that if you're going to pre-bid, if you're going to put a contract in, you can pick up the phone and call the person that has been de designated in the city to undo this contract. They are always willing to help you I always need to answer that question. Never feel intimidated. Be bold like Brother Enoch said. Don't be timid. You know, some of these things, if you're going to be there, you have to show up and show up well. 
you know, you're not going to put the, you have to figure out what line of questioning that you're going to ask. If they answer this question, what are the follow-ups you're going to have? Be very prepared. You know, when you're dealing with them, and when they see you, you're coming correct, they are even very happy to help you. And even some of the things we said are impediments to us, like our skin color, our accent, use it to your advantage. Yeah. Use it to your advantage, yeah. seriously, because more than likely, they don't, probably haven't had anyone with such an accent calling them for this type of, and some of them get excited even about your name. You know, seriously, use these things to your advantage and get what you need to get. The next slide, um, this probably shows a little bit more in you know, detail. It's kind of hard to see, but maybe once um, it's printed out, you probably can, can see. But basically, the contract was awarded to uh, Avella. Avella is a, is a apothecary of a pharmacy. They have multiple locations um, across the state. So again, it's about jumping in first. If you've done one before, they know you, it's easy to win the second one, the third one, the fourth one. So this is how businesses actually grow. You know, there are ways to, to grow your business, not just growing organically and trying to, but these are avenues whereby you can work with the government, state, local, federal, you know, to grow your business. The next one, this is one that I, I was talking about, we had a pre-bid conference. It's a world recovery. And Chengla, they're looking to put some pumps uh, inside the site so that the, you know they can pump water to some of the neighborhoods. I'm not, I'm not an engineer. Seriously, I mean I do work with a bunch of engineers, but when I do, they love what they do and they, they get excited and can get to the details. But I always try to get to the point of I need to understand how does this thing make money. If I can get that, I don't need everything else from them. If I need more, I can always go back. So I have that mindset. So I was in the room, I was at the site, you know, they were talking about the technical details. I felt very comfortable. As long as I know what are the key things that the city is looking for, you can see on the bid schedule what they're looking for, what quantity, what amount, you know, all the details you need, it's right here. And I know with this one, all I need to do is find a GC, a general contractor willing to partner up, we join up together and put in a bid, easy. Very easy. And, and, and as, as Christians amongst us, we should have all these disciplines. We should have the CPAs, we should have the lawyers, we should have the accountants, we should have the finance experts, we should have the bankers, we should have the, the engineers, the contractors, we should have all these different traits and skill sets that we can leverage and put ourselves together as a team and go after some of these things as a community. But for some reason, we, like, we don't do it. I don't know, I mean, there's some shortcomings in terms of in networking or maybe in terms of not sharing things and holding things, but it, it helps you when you collaborate and share information. Mm -hmm. That I've always seen to help. <laughs> when you share, you receive, like what I don't say. Mm -hmm. The many things I'm, I, I don't know that I'm looking for, that I'm trying to get, but I know that if I can open the little I know to people and help them, I will receive. Yeah. And it's been working for me. So again, that, that's something that we need to always keep at the back of our mind. Don't sh be shy, you know, to ask questions. Don't be shy to reach out to people, right? No one's going to look down at you. You know, we're always stri striving to get to, to a certain place. We've all come very far. So I think that would be one of the advice uh, that I, I would have for you guys. The next one, the next slide. Okay, these are the big documents. Again, very basic stuff. It might seem intimidating, but really if you dig into it, it's not that complex. Your entity name and type, you've already done that, check, right? Your state and date of incorporation, Arizona State, check. Your tax ID, check. Name of, your, name of the business executive, check. If you need to add executives, you issue a certificate of uh, membership right there and there, and you put them on, on, on your executive member list, it's done, it's easy. Uh, bank, check. General contractor's license, again, find a find partner. You know, there are a lot of Hispanic companies out there that are looking for work, right? All you just need to do is find friends or find people, they'll point you in the right direction. Subcontractors, if you find a general contractor, the subcontractors, you know, they will typically work with general contractors. Insurance, it might seem like a big deal, but most general contractors have insurance. And if they don't, it's a very easy process to pick up a $3 million 
general life life insurance for a very small fee. You can pick that up. The bond too, you go to the bank, it's a very easy process. The, most of the banks have a simplified process to get the bonds yeah. that you know, the state is looking for. It's easy. But when we look at these things, because we don't know, oh, I can't, fill out. I can't handle this, this is way too much for me. You know, but if you are going to, if you are going to go for it, you have to be able to break these barriers and solve these problems and get to where you need to get to. No one is going to hand it to you. Even other communities that are doing very well, even the white communities, they still have to, you know, break barriers and get what they want. So let's always keep that in mind that you know it's not because we're black or you know we are we're going to have these issues. No, everybody goes through it. If anything, we should spin our disadvantage to our advantage yeah. when we go through these things. Because more, more than often, no one is showing up. You are the only one showing up. And when they see you, they get excited and they are willing to help you. Let's even give this black person the front grab of the first time. <laughs> so we should always think about that. Don't get intimidated about whatever it is on the list. Pick up the phone, ask them. If you need to schedule some time to see them, just make sure you ask them. Even ask them with that thick accent. Seriously, ask them. Don't be shy. Be very confident. Yeah. So um, I think these are just to, to give you an example of what some of the checklists would look like. Again, there's a process. You have to hunt for it. They won't hand it to you. You know, the basic stuff, do it, but you still have to go hunt and get and win your contract. Uh, the next one, executing. So again, I talked about some of these things, right? Be open to partnering with others. Partnership is great. You know, if you look at most companies out there, even in the white communities, Asian communities, it's all about partnering together, you know, to get things done, to move higher, you know. Like Brother Enoch said, if you want to start some of these things, they're asking for $120,000 plus a credit facility for like $100,000. Of course, most of us won't have that. We wouldn't have it just sitting there. If we have that, then why are we even talking to them in the first place? You know? Seriously, but you find a way to circumvent that. You partner up. You know, you look at creative ways to get some of these things acquired, and then you solve it. It's all about solving problems. That's the way I see it. Another problem to solve. How do you solve it? A lot of us are Africans. We, we solve problems every day, all day. But we have to apply the same concept to some of these things. Solve those problems, find a way to solve it. At the end of the day, if it's very, very difficult, you can find there are alternatives, alternative fields, exceptions that a lot of these comp uh, states and institutions will grant. They don't advertise it, they will grant you exceptions. And some of the things you're looking for, you, you, you get them. The next one is build on your strength. You know what your strengths are. In the areas that you lack, find a partner and plug it. It's as simple as that. Know what you're good at, know the areas that you're strong at, build on that, and find the areas that you're lacking. Pull people, plug it. Again, build a team to execute, be open and share. You don't have to be a general contractor to get anything done, right? You don't have to be an engineer. You don't have to be a physician, a medical practitioner, right? You just need to find the right partners to work with. So my last parting slide is at the conclusions. The conclusion I have is that there are plenty of opportunities for minority business enterprises. A lot of opportunities out there. You know, just you know, find information, look for it, or talk to people who are closer to it already doing it. Right? Do your research about it. Don't wait for someone to hand you the research, like Brother Enoch was saying. Don't go to Brother Enoch and tell him to give you his business plan or his policies and procedures because they are not. They are designed specifically for his own practice his own business and in the in the in the in the in the process of you doing your research and building your own you learn a lot and you build something customized to yours that if they wake up at night you can answer the questions and answer five levels down of the question so it's very important socialize network and by all means you can swing this into a big job absolutely i'm a strong believer that your plan you can plan you can do a lot of these things on the side and still be focused on your day job. But once you get to the point whereby it's big enough, right, it can handle, you're having three, four group homes, of course, you're not going to wake up and go to that nine to five job, right? You have to start, you know, growing your business. So 
with that, I'll say thank you for the opportunity. It's been wonderful listening to others and also talking. Thank you. Thank you. I'll start by saying thank you to the organizers and to the presenters. Um, you know, it's like this meeting was really meant for me. I have a friend that's been very successful in business, and the person is in Florida. I said, you know what, I need you to mention me. I want to come, I'll fly down to Florida, and we can sit down together, and you can tell me what I can do. So, all things I was supposed to go to Florida for is what I'm getting from you guys right now. So, I want to say thank you so, so very much. If I want to say one thing quick before I ask, I have one question. Is to say that if you are in doubt, that whether it's whether God is here or not, God is here. Amen. Because the Bible says, whatever two or more are gathered, there I am. So it is one thing is, are you linked to it all? Some of us will come here today, like just going out and pushing down the drain, or maybe this is not to be the beginning of the ball, millionaire to come to this church. Now, one question Can you please email this to us? The, the slide. Yeah, absolutely. For that show, thank you. Yeah. So real quick, so make sure there's a there's a, a sign in sheet on the table in the front. So make sure you put your name on there and put your email address, and the and we will email the presentations. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, uh, this is going to just be. I'm not going to be too much question about that within the contribution in that. Uh, thank you. So, um, Pastor, we want to move this furthermore because it's an opening that we need to attack immediately. I've gone to so, so many of these bids too. I've already been the only black. And because the bids are big, they are huge ones. Yeah, to the tune of $150 million, $300 million. There was one in the Air Force Base, it used to be Air Force Base, down by the Gateway Airport, they want to move a facility and equipment, a test flight equipment for the Air Force from that facility to another facility down the road. And when I look at the logistics and everything that I will need to do it, I, I said, this is too big, I can't I can handle this. It will take me time to hire people to do it, to hire electronics guys, to hire electrical guys. And it was just too huge. And then the same thing that happened to you. As soon as we get off the bid, everybody who came wants to talk to me because I'm the only black there. So even those of them who have been doing it before, who have done it before. So, but uh, I told them my company is backing down because we have another contract on hand. There was another bid that I went to Data China for the fuel supply to the city of China fuel system. And when I got to that bid, there were only eight of us. And all the other seven, all of them have gas stations. And this bid was designed that you must have an existing gas station that you are already operating. If you are starting from the crash, that uh, uh, they, they, they put a clause in there, unless you are able to meet that criteria before you start the job. And I said, like, okay, wait a minute. And every one of them already have gas station. They've been they're already talking about how they will do it. And those of them had that have the contract before the test buy had but they, they were already there. And so I said, okay, they're going to be competing with you guys. So what I'm at, going into, Pastor, is that, uh, if people are willing, form organization three or two of you together. Some of these bids too, they are very voluminous. When you click on the bid, there is attachments of almost 20 documents that each of them has almost 200 pages that has to be read. And you are given two weeks to finish or submit your bid. They are voluminous. If you are all by yourself, you may not be able to go through all those documents to yourself. So when you form a group of two or three people and form an organization and begin to bid on this kind of contracts, the money is there. It says, bless country. 
tap into it. Let's, let's, let's just get together and tap into it. And I really appreciate that and uh, both of you for everything you have done today. All right. Let me add uh, <laughs> what Brother Queen. I, I think Brother Queen and I hang on this uh, a lot. And I just want to give you a success story about going here. Um, there's one day that I was in the office and somebody came in there. And he has good phones. He had a DCS phones. And he has all the circle that I was talking about. It has the group home, it has the transportation, it has a um, receiving center, it has a counseling, it has everything on one route. So he came and said, but you know, um, I would like to do what you, I, I want to get into DVD. And I said, okay, um, what do you mean? He said, tell me what you do. So I sat down with him, I went to the website, I, like I did today, step by step, spent about an hour with him, and then we left. So I, and I, it didn't seem to me to ask him what do I do in that store. So one day he invited me to come to his place, he go at a place off, and I went there and then we talked. And when I went there, he wanted information from me. And then he asked me to drive all the way to his office, and then I did. So I didn't bother giving him the information, so after we finished, I was going. And then some, something pushed me to go, oh, ask him what, how he get his contract. Before I was still doing his DVD. Now he said he wanted to get into DVD, so I turned around and I said, hey, can I also ask you what, how you get your contract or what you do? And he picked up off the pen and he wrote brokeraz.com for him. So that's all, that was it. So then when I came, I start looking into that. And then it came to a point that the boy does, he knows the business, but he doesn't want to sit down and do the proposals and stuff like that. So when I, after three, four days, he asked me if I went to the website. I said, yeah, these are very good. I saw a few of them, a lot of them. I read, I started reading just to educate myself. And then he was asking me questions and then I was answering. So, one day he sent somebody to me, and the person has a, saw a pic that I saw, but I didn't look at it because I didn't have, I thought I don't have the expertise to do it. It was no medical transportation. So he said, go to this boy, he will help you to fill out the proposal, he has a lead, he has all those stuff. But I never written proposal before. I never, you know, I didn't know what it is. So the person came. The person didn't have in one van, no van, no car. But then when we read, like Papa said, when we read the contract, he says you have to have at least 10 vehicles. You have to have a business already registered. You have to all those things. So when I read, I go, they say you have to have all these things. You go, let's do it anyway. Mm -hmm. And so, and what happened was, they said proposals, okay, let me go page by page. And I saw the scope of, the scope of work. And then I started reading, printed all the scope of what they put it on the side. And then take, I took all the forms that they asked for. I actually used the scope of work to write a proposal. <laughs> okay, so I wrote a very good proposal. He did it in, this is a million dollars contract, okay? Set it in, boom, got it. I go, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> but when I, was right, when I was doing it, questions, do you have, Transportation, no. How many can you have within many days? Four. They, they want about 20, right? So those questions that I was asking, I was answering, I know he, he's not gonna get it. But guess what? He had that, what I was saying. She was the only black person. And there was a group of five companies that did it. Uh, that selling the bid, but they were looking for small, company. There was discount car. There was all those big taxi companies. They didn't give it to anybody. They gave it to her. And on to today, she's running the business. Okay. My own experience, I was about to go to Ghana and I saw a big, the state was closing some of the group homes. Um, and a center, when you're going to Tucson, if you take courage, there's a big place there, Arizona Children Center. Huge place. 
Okay, so I saw the bill, I go, ah, okay, let me see. So I put things together quickly, wrote the, uh, answer the question, did the proposal, and I sent it in. So before I sent it in, I sent it in the day that it was closing. The next day they called me, they go, can you, do you want to come downtown so we can talk about this contract? And then, and then uh, I went. When I went, they said, well, you are contract. We want to go with you, but we need to fix some things. I said, ah, if there's a lot of different con um, bids there, why would they want me to fix my proposal to go? I find out that they, everybody was dropped and they want to actually help me build and come up with policy and procedure out of that. So they will, like I said, they will help you. You don't have to be great to start, but you have to start to be great. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to do. Okay. Um, if you're thinking about it, you have to be great to start, then you will never start anything. Okay, so I didn't have all the, the, the work. So what I did was, they helped me fix everything and then everything. And this is millions of millions of dollars contract. It's a big, huge places. Um, I'm talking about 300 and something bits. All right, so I did it, sent everything to them, and then I went. So when I was going to Ghana, I thought, okay, by the time I come back, uh, I, uh, <laughs> 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 so my assistant that I, I have, I handed everything to, to, to her. And when I was in Ghana, they wanted very small thing for me, so I told her, Send it before the 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 due date that it needed. And she 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 failed to send those things. And then they called me and go, if you don't get this due to have an answer, close the bed tomorrow. And there was no way I could do it. That's the reason why they sent it to the second person. And the second person they sent it to was also not a minority but female. You yeah. see? So sometimes it's not if it is not a minority, the females get double portion here. <laughs> you know? And so these are the things that we, we don't want to like right now, right now, if you go to the website, there's so much. Sister Maya, you can find us. There was one time I saw one they were looking for somebody that will go to prisons for hair and all those things. Even barber shop. You saw it like that, actually. Prisons, cleaning, all those things. Sometimes nobody, nobody even applied for it. I know there was one time that I, we went to private, and they were telling me that in Arizona, there's a contract that they, they give you to Intel or microchip or something. There's a portion, especially if it's coming from uh, military. There's a portion that have to go to the small business. And guess what? 99%. There's no minority or small business that will apply for that contract. And guess what? Who goes to? Back to Intel. Because nobody applies for it. You see? So these are the things that you need to take advantage. Some of them that even take money. They don't need that much, that much money. You know, there's some small, 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 small uh, projects that for people that didn't even apply for it. And it will be there, you can see it coming up, and they will do amendment. They will do amendment again. Yeah. And deadline will come, and they will do amendment. So if you see that, that means nobody's applying to it. Yeah. So let's uh, take advantage of it. Thank you. Uh, I also like to contribute to uh, the easy ways to also look into the procure easy for contracts. As you know, uh, this, um, in other states, because I look through other states as well, I deal with Illinois and also Indiana. They don't have the old bid in there. You know, they don't show you, they'll show you the list of the contracts contracts, and they will want it, but they don't actually show you things that they did to win it. In Arizona, fortunately for Arizona, all the other uh, awardees, you know, that have the contracts, you can actually see all those paperwork called the answers and questions in Procure Easy. So what uh, I normally do, I think I've shared it with Pastor Busola before, uh, it can take me eight hours 
just on the computer because I will point, I will go to almost 20 different companies that are bidding or that won what I'm trying to win. So in that case, I select all those descriptions, all those things that makes the company perfect. I put, you know, if I go to 20 places and I tag one or two things, so when I write mine, you can tell 100% is going to be, you know, awarded. So that's just a benefit, you know, for people that are willing to do it, but it's not easy. It's not, you still have to do your own research, you know, but at least you have some, you know, uh, benefit from seeing other people's write up. So you can at least tap, you know, and uh, use it for yours. Uh, I was going to ask, what happens if you put a bid in and surprisingly you win it and you don't have the money to execute it? What do you do then in that scenario? That's a tough one. Um, I think you'll probably be... So it's... It's a yes and no answer. So before you get to win the bid, I wanted to you. They actually verify all of these things, the finances. So like your bonds, your accounts, and things like that, that you have to provide and show that you can actually execute the bids. There, there might be some other bids that uh, that you don't need to show up front, but be able to at least show somehow that you can get it done, right? It might not be a lot of money, then you can find banks or people to partner with and you can get what you do. But more than likely, you have to meet all those qualifications in terms of finances and things they're asking for. Uh, I'd like to add to the question um, the brother asked. Um, it depends on the bid that you know, you're bidding for or you want. In some criteria, you will see you know, they want to work with you because even people that have bigger availability of funds, they are not reliable. And this is from experience. Like recently, we won a contract for transportation. They are looking for like 30 vans. To be honest, we only have about two. So when they called, the guy was asking, okay, how many vans do we have? I said, we are reliable, but we don't have what you're looking for. Immediately, she, he said, we will start with that too. And I promised him, you know, in July, this is what we are getting, so, so passengers, bus, you know, so they can start with you, especially your minority. You know, we've been talking about being minority, they look into that, especially if your proposal outweighs other, you know, uh, uh, companies, you know, that bid it. So they always want to work with you and give you, you just have to be uh, uh, honest with them, tell them what you have, you know, but eventually you will still need some money to back up, but they can start with whatever you have. Yeah, so, so don't let what yeah. they are re uh, requesting discourage you. Yeah. Just to add to that, to share some of my experiences. So there was one of the contracts that I looked at um, in terms of, so I think one of them was the HIV. They wanted to supply HIV medication in some volume into some certain communities. Uh, some of those med medications are expensive. So when I reached back to them, we were talking about it. They were actually trying to help me solve that problem by putting me towards a program called, a, it's a 340B program, that if you qualify for it as a pharmacy, the, your acquisition cost of buying those things you supply is actually way low. So I never had an idea what a 340B was, but they were helping me to you know, bring those up. There's another one. They wanted uh, to set up, they wanted us to set up pharmacies in rural places for veterans. So they have veterans that instead of coming all the way to some of the major VA hospitals, and they would rather have satellite pharmacies in those rural areas that they can, the, the vets can go pick up their medications. So I think they were looking to sell five. So I, I was like, I'm just a little mom and pop. They were actually staring in the direction of others that I can contract with that already have existing local pharmacies in those areas that I can partner with and work with. So oftentimes, don't, don't get bogged down. I guess that's the moral, right? Push, keep pushing, and keep trying to solve the problem. They will work with you, especially if they're minority, small business, they will work with you and help you to make sure they can. Because it's a it's a pride to them, or they're able to meet a quarter, saying that over the last, they look at data, historical data, 
They say, okay, why the last two years or one year, we were able to award zero to minority or we were able to award five. How did you guys do it? You know, they, they always look within themselves and, and say, how, how did this department, how were they able to get a minority business to win a contract? So they all try to do the same thing. It's sort of a, 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 a it's not pride, but the government likes it. Even at the federal level, it's sort of mandated that, hey, you know, we have to make sure we give you this contract, but a small percentage of it has to go to a minority-owned business. No, thank you so much for coming. I think the question that um, keeps ringing in my mind is, okay, before you go for the pre-bid conference and you have to do all of that, you know, when you have to do the quotations, you know, how do you, I mean, new fish, right? Right. Do you know what amounts, you know, to put into that, and then you want to go bid against, you know, those guys who already have an idea as to, so that cost, I think that's the big thing that yeah. keeps all this. So I'll tell you what, most of us are always in that same boat, exactly. right? You could be an expert, you've done so many things, when you get to that, writing that request for quotes, right, you, you, you're always clueless. Sister so Laura mentioned something. You go back to historical data, some of the ones say that we were won. Mm -hmm. How did they do it? Right? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yes. You you also do your research. You can you can find vendors who will supply what they're looking for and build in your own margin into it. There are many ways to approach it. So typically by the time you triangulate different methods, you get to a point whereby you feel comfortable, you know what, this is this is my bid and this is what I'm gonna give us a quote and I'm comfortable that I will still make my money. At the end of the day, you might come in very low that they'll be telling you that, you know what, you need to, we can pay you a little bit more. So they will guide you, they will help you, you know, along those lines. I just want to make another contribution. Um, when you are reading these bids, don't look at the tunnels. They are the problems you want to solve. So when I'm reading them, I saw this one, so I don't have this one, so I will read that last. Put those things that you know you don't really have, put them aside. Put, put them aside, go through it. So can I apply and bring all these things after application? And the big turn off is money. Take money off your mind. I really encourage everybody to take money off your mind. I submitted the bid a long time ago from Connecticut. The U.S. government want to contract maintenance services for engineers and technicians, and they want a company to do it in Tucson, Fort Martin, Air Force Base, and another one. And the government says we budget only $40 million for this to be done in five years. So I look at everything, you must have this, you must have this. I put those aside. And I prepare my calculations according to the way they want it. By the time my bid got to them, I was the only company that said I can do this job for 38 million. A little bit more. All other companies bid over. In aviation corporations, they bid over so that they can tell the government the amount you are located for this contract is not enough. We are used to doing that in this company. But this is a minority company that, so, so now their first area of verification is called my phone. My phone was my cell phone number, and I answered, and they check it. They might be their next point of checking to check the physical office. While the physical office is my hotel room in Connecticut where I'm doing under contract. So I came home that weekend and I was uh, in Louis trying to buy something to say something at home. And the guy called me and said, uh, Mr. Lupa, you are the president of uh, Femtech. I said, yes. Well, we have a problem. He said, we have to ask for your permission. <coughs> and I said, what is going on? So well, you met every requirement for this contract. You are the one we're supposed to award it to. But the physical location is your hotel room in Connecticut, and I said, go, I cannot have an office after the bid. No, those are the things we need to verify before we award this contract. It's a federal contract, it's not a local contract. And so, uh, to tell you that we will not give it to you, give it to the next person, 
by federal law, we have to let you know why, and we are so that we can tell the government so that the government, is not, apart from being a federal law, because we clear the DOD engineer, so you qualify, your company qualify, uh, and when it comes to clearance, they use that record. They have to report back to the government that they are not doing anything for this reason, and they have called with me, and I have approved them to go ahead and run the debate of me. Uh, so I knew I was done having those things, but I put them aside. And I work my calculations, prepare my proposal, and ask my students. So don't work on tunnels. There are people here that are even like, oh, part of the whole church. You win an $8 million contract. The only thing waiting for you is the money to execute it, how to start it. You come back to the church. Pastor, this is the situation. You will not send that contract back to the government. Call these people, call them. Tell the pastor, call those of us that in the business. And then how do I go about this? And see whether you not have the money you want. God will help us. Amen. I know we're talking about networking, you know, and the, the list we send out there just have the name, the email, and the signature. I'm just going to, going to suggest, can we kind of put together what do we do individually? And you don't need to be shy about what you do. I mean, I may be a carpenter, and you may be um, an engineer, whatever you do. But the point is that we have this pack together. It can be with the, whoever is the organizer, and maybe you are looking for somebody out there, you know what, call the organizer and I say, you know, we have a brother in the house that can actually do that job. Maybe that will help us as well. There are any other questions? No other questions? Oh, we have one. Oh, here we go. Uh, you talk about uh, how to create an entity and there are a lot of contracts that you can apply for. Do you uh, create your entity or maybe your name, to your, your business name to show that you could maybe take care of any contract? Or how do you research to what contract you want to bid for? Yeah. So my, my general advice is when you would like to go for anything, keep your entity generic. Don't be too specific. So with that, even when you are forming your entity, they, sometimes they ask you to be specific, are you going to be doing food, are you going to be doing uh, IT? You can pick general business. But if it's very generic, it's in such a way that it can handle you know, any, any, pretty much any project. Yeah. And don't name your company as so-and-so, a generic company. And you want to tackle something that's sort of engineering. So just keep it broad. Say LLC. Or just something LLC. LLC. But brother, even though you have the name as a helper, that doesn't also disqualify you. If you, if you, can, you can apply for carpenter, okay? Um, the reason why I'm saying that is recently the one that came up was um, uh, IT, uh, data analysis and uh, uh, development, uh, in, in, in architecture. It has software and everything in there. So I am healthcare company, right? And my name is Zion Compassion Care, right? Um, oh, well, you didn't say Zion Compassion Care. Just Zion Compassion Care, right? But if my name will not um, disqualify me. Um, but then the thing is, they don't, they don't start scheming by names. They, they do it by the proposals and stuff like that. And if they have if you are in a proposal, you are saying, okay, these are the people I have, this one I have, this one I have. They don't go to the to the name, unless what they are requiring or the. Sometimes most of the proposal or work of um, the, the the scope of work will tell you the, those people that are going to do this have to be RNs. These are the people who are going to do this work have to be this. And if you can say yes, I have this, I have this, I have that, and if your name is something transportation but they need clinical, they, they still can give you that. One of the, just, I think that's a good point, but one thing I've seen is that 
there are some silent instances that you are applying for something and you are trying to get something done that there's something called SIC code, S-A-I-C, I'm not sure. It's a code specific to the type of business you're doing. Yeah, yeah. So if you need to also be sure that you're picking something generic. Right. Yeah, I think it's changed over time to something else. Yeah. So my general advice would be keep it generic in such a way that the optics are managed that you can handle pretty much anything. You don't. So if you are forming an entity, uh, by the way, you can form an entity and form another one. In the, the other one can be a parent to it, and you can. So it's yeah, it's a preference. Okay. No other questions? Uh, may I complicate something? Uh, also on Procure AC, if you want to register, there will be a stage where you will ask you what services you want to be seen because it's whatever you do, you will see. So for example, if you are in Baba and you want to see contracts that relate to Baba, if you don't click if you don't click those kind of services along the line, you will never see it. Mm. Also when you log in first, you know, and register, log in all those Things that you know you can provide, and that's all the contract will be seen. Oh, wow. yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah, that's a very good point. All right. Any other questions? No, that's it. Thank you. All right. Thank you. side here, but we would like to take the children over and